All right, here we are with the TS440 from Kenwood. I've got all three boards out of the display. These are called control boards. This one is the display board because it has a display on it. Now, I just spent quite a while, um, I'll have to look at the clock, probably over an hour easily. I resoldered every single solder joint on this thing. There were so many that were cracked. Um, somebody had come in here and reflowed some of this and it was just horrible. You'd heat the solder joint up and it would bubble flux out of it and make voids and all kinds of crap. The solder was very crystalline, which means it didn't get heated to full melting temperature and it trapped a bunch of flux in it and just, just horrible. I mean, like, this is like cheap CB radio type factory soldering and I'm, I'm a little shocked actually. I don't know if you guys can see any of this very well, but now I've spent a little time with some Q-tips and alcohol cleaning it, but there, this board's actually sticky from all the alcohol, all the uh, flux all over it. So I've been scrubbing it, and it's it's a huge pain in the butt. But at least it's reflowed. Now here's what happened. This you see this big notch here. There's two big standoffs tied to the metal frame in the faceplate, and every time you you know try to twist the frame you twist this board because there's a big notch in the middle frame too so what happens is it was stressing these already very stressed solder joints and um, no matter how I poked and prodded on the two control boards nothing ever changed but this thing uh, it was killing the display or giving me dots or shutting the display clear off so um, I've reflowed everything and now it's a matter of I don't know if you can see in the shine, the reflection here, man, it's just flux everywhere. So some of these had been touched up, like the display had been, but there was so much bad in here that you don't, you don't screw around. You, you just reflow it. It takes forever. It's a lot of work. But the good news is you end up not having a problem. You, you end up fixing the problem. So I'm going to scrub on this some more and then... Uh, I'll work on these two boards. Um, I've done all this under a microscope and that really helps you see the pattern of how things are and uh, yeah you know I've read that the darn um, um, you know the Kenwoods will have problems like this but you know I thought these were ham radio manufacturers not CB radio maybe they use the same manufacturers for their soldering this does have green solder mask on both sides. That's pretty cool. So do these. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But solder is what kills them over time. That's what literally ruins them. So anyway, um, in fact, some of the connectors that these tie to the mate with the male pins, there's flux up on those pins. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of cleanup to do before I put this together. It's a little complicated getting it apart. So I want to take you know, good care to do this right because I sure as hell don't want to take it apart again. This side of the board's really clean. It's not perfect. It's a lot cleaner than all the rest of it over here. So I'm just tired from being hunched over a microscope for, I said, an hour. There's no way it's only been an hour and a lot longer. But it looks like it's supposed to look. So next I'll, you know, um, there's some other ways to clean this a little faster, but because of the type of display that's on here, I don't think I want to get alcohol on anything. I think I'm just going to have to scrub it all by hand until it gets done. And then these boards look a lot... Yeah, yeah, no, there's flux all over them too. Oh, God. Yeah, this is, I don't know, this, you know, it's 1986 to now, so it's over 30 years old. Maybe somebody's been in here. These solder joints don't look, they look factory. They look like nobody's ever touched them. But, um... Man, I don't know if the camera will do any good to show you this up close. This side is reflowed. This side's reflowed, but it's it's filthy. It's got flux and crap all over it. I don't know if you can see that well, but anyway, that's what it takes. And I think because of the way this was attached to the frame, flexing it would, you know loosen, well, it would take advantage of already bad solder and cause intermittent connections, especially when you have high frequency stuff running around. With DC it's not such a big deal, but there's a lot of frequency stuff running that display. This isn't just, 
is the 12 volts there or not. It's, it's a lot different than that. So good solder makes a huge difference. Okay, well, that's it for right now, man. I've kind of got a headache and I'm tired of working on it, but I think this is where the problem lies. Yeah, I could put it all together and test that theory, but it's way too much work to take this apart. So I'm going to reflow all of this, and I always do a last inspection on the microscope before I put it back in, make sure I didn't cause um, a solder short. That happens sometimes. I've done that. Rarely, but I've done it. I'm... Anyway, so... Um, that's where we're at with the with the 440 off of fa Facebook. At least I know the unit works. Now it'll be reliable for for many years after this, and that that matters to me. All right. Anyway, thanks for your time. See you. Bye.